It's the Two Johnnies Podcast. Two Johnnies Podcast. Two Johnnies recording a podcast. Hello, hello, hello. You're welcome to the Two Johnnies Podcast, bringing you all the mayhem and news from the world of the Two Johnnies. I'm Johnny B. And I'm Johnny Smacks. Welcome to podcast number 60, coming to you from our man cave slash studio in Care County Tipperary. <laughs> On this week's podcast, we debate how much you should tip and when should you tip. He has a voice that could make Wolverine purr and suits a fan that make Jackie Terror look like a hobo. Oh, Mara, you're dishing it out today. He's no Ron Burgundy, he's no Furlong, and he'll be here with the news. Maureen has been busy continuing her ATM robin spree in the border region, but she still found the time to be here with her mystery topic. <laughs> we compile our list of sports that aren't yet broadly popular in Ireland, but we think Irish people should have a go, because they'd probably be class at them. That's true, and as is mandatory, we finish the podcast with our yurts and dirts of the week. Yurt and dirt. Before commencing with proceedings, Matt was arising from last week's podcast, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman, could I just say, Dan was on Snapchat. Dan! <laughs> Dan! 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 If you haven't seen that Alan Partridge sketch... Dan! He probably didn't hear me. <laughs> just type in Alan Partridge, Dan, on YouTube and enjoy yourselves. So, Dan on Snapchat said, Great podcast. Thanks, Dan. FYI, Subway in Loch Ray provides sandwiches for the mourners in the funeral home next door. Cookies and all. That's great, isn't it? Like, <laughs> oh, my grandfather died. Meatball marinara, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about funerals last week, but... You couldn't have meatball marinara wearing a suit. No, lad. You're <laughs> sure to be like <laughs> wet with tears and tomato sauce. Tika. So, yeah, Tika, man. It's messy. Uh, Claire was in touch on Instagram. She said, well, lads, love listening to the podcast every week. Was listening to this week's and on the topic of funerals, I just had to share this story with you. My nanny passed away almost three years ago. She's RIP there in brackets. And the evening of the wake... <laughs> In brackets, I love it. <laughs> and the evening of the wake, we were all in the funeral home while people were coming in to pay their respects. I was sitting beside my sister and we were obviously very upset when all of a sudden I could see my boyfriend and brother-in-law who were sitting across from us absolutely creased laughing. I was so annoyed, I threw them a dagger and my boyfriend pointed across at my little cousin who was only eight at the time and had been given her mother's phone to keep her occupied. I looked over and lads, she was standing down at the end of Nanny's coffin taking selfies of herself <laughs> and Nanny. I literally did not know where to look. There was a big crowd in the room and we were not the only ones who could see what she was doing. Her poor mother almost had a heart attack when she spotted her. Just as I was reading that out, just reminding me, love, I remember I went to play a challenge game one day in like Tina Abbey in Irie in Galway. What? And like, yeah, it was a really serious challenge game before our first round of championship. I think we were minor at the time. And we were gathered in a huddle and we were all in there like, you know, come on now, boys. And the manager's son, who was around five at the time, just took his mickey out and started pissing everywhere. And like we were in the middle of a huddle and the manager was going mental because he couldn't see the sun and the young man was just pissing off. Out in the field. Yeah, out in the middle of the huddle. It's just crazy. Oh I remember thinking like there's no way you can get psyched up for this. Like the young man, oh, it's never. Sorry, sidetrack. Go on, John. Uh, in relation to Mara's mystery topic last week, as a man who has spent too much time on checkouts, this lad is working in a supermarket, he never gave a shite about lads buying tampons. Genuinely couldn't care, never gave it a second thought. However, lads buying condoms is better crack. I always extensively questioned the lad. I even asked one of them where the bird was from, telling him, they like the blue ones up there. Some crack. Lads get fair awkward about it. I tell you, I'm not going into that supermarket. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you that. Anonymous on Snapchat was in touch as well. And they said, I met the now girlfriend back in first year of college. We were about four months deep in a relationship when we had our first argument. I felt she overreacted and couldn't understand why. To cool down, I took a stroll to the shop because arguments and college hunger don't mix. While there, I spotted the tampons, bought them along with a bar of chocolate, landed back to her apartment, swung open the bedroom door and fucked them up on the bed along with saying, here, get them into you and I'll see you in a week. Little did I know that it was actually coming up to her time of the month, she just burst out laughing, so did I, had makeup sex, and all we knew, time was of the essence, that's how most of our fights end now, one of us does something outrageous, so that we both just laugh and talk it out, so I definitely recommend it lads, swallow the pride, buy the tampons for that reason, although if she's a right bitch, it could end terribly, all the best. <laughs> that's a fair approach, like, that could have backfired on him, like, yeah. you know, and like, in fairness, the makeup sex, like, Fair play to him, but get in before the fucking flood, bite him. Yeah. <laughs> that what I say? Young Murph on Instagram says, Well, lads, love the show. Your episode about haggling dredged up a few memories from my youthful days working in a garden centre. 
I was on the till and some old prick of a lad brings up a porcelain garden gnome yoke, puts it on the counter and shouts, ten pound. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing at the thing, ignorant as you like, suited me down to the ground. I picked it up, scanned it, and I said back to him, no boss, computer says fourteen ninety five. He shouts again, ten pound. <laughs> I said fourteen ninety five. He says ten pound again. Picks up the thing, slams it on the counter, probably a lot harder than he meant to, because the gnome broke into about 40,000 pieces. I says to him, right boss, £10 it is. <laughs> In hindsight, I should have offered him a packet of glue as well. The prick upped and walked out of the place without even paying. Oh, oh. he's a bad man. Bad motherfucker. And Brian Oak from Limerick got in touch and said, a boy the kid, this story is in reference to chatting up women. It's a bit long-winded, but I promise you, it's the shit. And that shit is in capital letters, so please stick with it. I don't like where this is going. So we're all out in Galway for the races last year, drinking all day and then ended up in a nightclub. One of my friends, let's call him Wolfie, gets confident with a few drinks in him. So he started chatting a girl up who was on a hen in the smoking area, telling her he was a teacher, which he is. I came in to get him a drink and she starts talking to me, asking what I do. For some reason, Wolfie said I was also a teacher, which I am not. And she asked what subjects I taught. I asked her to guess. <clears throat> Whatever she said, I was going to say that was it, out of politeness. So she said Irish. Ding, ding, that's the correct answer. She then asked what my secondary subject was, and I told her that there's no way she could get two out of two, and if she did, Wolfie would have to buy her a drink. She guessed geography, and of course, that was the correct answer again. I'm just a whore for those oxbow lakes. So we go to the bar. She starts asking if I'm single. I told her I was, so she goes away and brings back her friend, who was a tasty bit of white pudding. We were introduced to each other on a first name basis and then the friend says he teaches Irish to which the girl says oh you're a Gwail Gore so am I and starts rambling on in Irish asking me questions. Fair to say about 30 seconds into the conversation I was found out trying to convince her I was just a terrible teacher that read from the textbooks didn't help. Needless to say I went home alone that night but still had a better night than Wolfie. His one was staying in a hotel so they went back but they wouldn't let him in. They walked around Galway City for hours looking for any accommodation they could just just to, just to get the old jostle, just to get the deal done. He then gave up and sent her back to the hotel. Right, as this happened, Wolfie got a pain in the stomach and needed the bathroom quick. It was around 5am, every hour was closed and there were no taxis to take him home. The boys were staying too far outside the city so he couldn't bring her one back to the... The, oh, the boys were staying in a house outside the city Ugh. so he couldn't bring her back there for the ride because they were all sleeping on the floor. So he did what any animal would do, Wolfie did. He found an alleyway around Air Square, squatted down and did the business. Talk about shit night for all involved. <laughs> shit down an alleyway. Like. What kind of a mental story is that? <laughs> you know, I have to say, I love the listeners of this podcast. That they feel it's appropriate that they can give us correspondence. That is literally shit. I, uh, I love it. I like this tactic of, um, guess what I teach. Yeah. That is smooth. Yeah. He shouldn't have said Irish talk. History, you just bluff, lad. So it's all bluff, anyway. It's all made up. Uh, Aoife on the gram said, Good one, Faria. Went to see you in the Woodlands Hotel last time you were in Waterford. That's right. On our first tour, we did Waterford. Booked the weekend off and went out with the other half only a week early. Oh, receptionist had some laugh at us. Of course, enjoyed the show the actual week it was on. So we got tickets for your Theatre Royal show. That's right. We're going to Waterford uh, next week. Sold out. Sorry, lads. I asked... For the early shift in work, because I usually work late Saturdays and Sundays. So, outfit bought, weekend off, and we're buzzing. And sure didn't she? Only after booking the wrong feckin' weekend off work again. So now, I'm working the late shift on the Saturday. Oh my god, the other half is going to be gutted, and she's going to be in the bad books. Any chance you could break it to him on the podcast? Ah, she hasn't told him! It might sound better coming from ye. Tell Rory Hanrahan, Aoife is sorry, Rory, she can't go to the show. Rory Hanron, you want to have to get rid of her? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Which means she's booking the wrong weekends all the time, Just you know. Just buy her a diary. Fool no. me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on you. That doesn't even make sense. Go on. Hand of God was in touch, who's in Perth, Australia, and he snapped to say, listening to you on the beach in Fremantle today after a couple of interviews. Funny shit having Chris Jenner as your mother and riding the sisters. Suggested name change uh, to the show would be keeping it up with the Kardashians <laughs> oh. Oh. Tell you Chucky on Insta said what were you going to say Johnny you were going to say something filthy there nope uh, <laughs> I'm going to hold off well lads and more listening to the latest podcast uh, last night about mammies opening your post it's not always a bad thing every time I go through the e-flow on the M50 I forget to pay it two or three times a year maybe within a week I get a phone call from the mother 
you forgot to pay your toll and you're after getting a fine here in the post, followed by an, oh, Jesus, mammy, I never thought of it. The conversation always finishes with, now, I paid that fee this time, but don't let it happen again and don't tell your father. Oh, <laughs> your mother is paying the toll for you, Chucky. You have to love the Irish mammies. Luke and Yeah, Fnatic. that's why Irish men are ruined. Yeah. I was going to say that. that that's, your that's, mammy bailing you out. Yeah, yeah the Irish mammies. That poor boy. lad's girlfriend. You know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't know if he has a girlfriend. Yeah, he didn't say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Chucky. Boy. No, I, I look, I've seen his profile picture. There's a woman there. so I was just uh, like, She you? has my sympathies. You doing a bit of a, creep, a bit of creeping, Maureen? Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Luke on Snapchat was in touch. He said, "Well, lad, in relation to entering the community games, myself and this lad Jimbo used to pull the same trick with the school athletics. In the junior sort, we entered, <laughs> entered the triple jump, and we were straight to the Connacht final, as nobody else in North Connacht entered. In the final, we were up against this other lad from Galway. But when we tried the triple jump, in each of our three jumps, neither of us made it as far as the sand. <laughs> as a result, we were disqualified, and your man took the only medal." Following year in TY We tried the high jump But they got wise And had a practice in place To make sure you can compete So in the practice At North Connacht Neither of us could get <laughs> Over the lowest level bar And we were kicked out In the interest of our own Health and safety Bear in mind He has three All-Ireland medals And I myself played rugby For Connacht So it's not like We're not athletic <laughs> Just trying the wrong sports The triple jump Is brilliant like. That's class. Coming up Not reaching the sand like. <laughs> <laughs> Just smacking your arse up the concrete. Uh, <laughs> the things, the lengths lads will go to to get a day off school. It's remarkable. All right, so who's going to win the Nose News mug this week? Kindly sponsored by the guys down in hairybaby.com where you can buy loads of two Johnny's merchandise. Um, I like Luke and the triple jump now. I like the triple jump. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hand to God, God, we're not sending one to Australia. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Postage and packaging, man. Come on. Luke, yeah. Luke on Snapchat saw it with that last one. He's going to get Noah's news. Did you see? um, We met a fella last night who had a t shirt and said, That's a fact, Janet. No way. He got it printed up himself. Jack Fogarty from Tim Moore. Yeah, Yeah, Jack. Knew his brother, yeah. Go on to the two Johnny's that I eat. (laughs) (laughs) Buy a proper one. Buy a proper one. (laughs) Spurious t shirts going around Dublin last night. Oh, that was fair class, though. <laughs> Mad to see it. Like, jeez. Uh, yeah, so this week, yes, I have been mostly eating. Um, <laughs> we did an April Fool's uh joke that we were playing Country and Western Festival. I can confirm that's not happening. <laughs> Several comments were like, Oh my god, we should go. And then, yeah. like, no, no, where do you get tickets? <laughs> oh, can hell, where do you get a grip? <laughs> Holy jizz. Uh, we finally did a sketch. Yeah, we did a sketch oh. after six months. So if you don't know, we do sketches on YouTube and um, on Facebook Facebook and all that. That's kind of where we started. Yeah. And we haven't done one in ages. And everybody who follows us on YouTube is going bananas. Where are the sketches? Mm. Just keep commenting on the podcast. Put up sketches. Yeah, it's mostly angry eight-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> so we did a sketch. Trolling us. <clears throat> I got to wear a dress. It was good. Yeah, Johnny was delighted. And I got into a cupboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had to fucking Make bits of the cupboard Take everything out of the cupboard And he just knocked the shelf inside us To get in <laughs> But It was gas Because we hadn't done a sketch in so long And I could not start st- stop laughing there, And out, we'll get an outtakes video up this week I swear to god The tears were rolling down my eyes Like so funny <laughs> He's a gas man But Johnny had me in stitches But uh, yeah No it was great to be back doing the sketches It's so weird Like that's as close as we get to acting Yeah Next week, Fair City. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what? Yo, what? <laughs> Do you know, Jar Leo, you're a pox. You're a pox. <laughs> we did uh, a live show in Athlone. Mm. Athlone crack. is a lovely place. Yeah. You know, it comes in for some, you know, negative reviews, mostly from Noel Furlong <laughs> and, and, and stuff. But At the Midlands as a whole, it gets a bad name. Yeah, like it Do does, know? does. Athlone is like the Las Vegas of the Midlands. Yeah, it's a good spot. Yeah, we done the Radisson Blue in Athlone. Radisson Blue. Solo show. It was a great crack. The Blue. The Blue. The Blue. And uh, it was on the river. Lovely place. And Johnny dragged me down for some sightseeing around Athlone. Athlone, uh, nice place. How did Fuck that go? all to see. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lad. Do you know the usual vice playing the accordion? He's like from East Romania or Bulgaria. He or wasn't Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Smacks was like, leave him alone, Johnny. Leave him alone. Yeah, <laughs> Johnny just kept walking over. He's like, stop, no, stop, stop. Leave him alone, like. We were wrecked, wrecked tired, and we'd go to Dublin, and Johnny was like, oh, we'll go and see a few bits. Freezing cold. I had a pair of shorts on, of course. I was going over to your man, I was like, hey, do you know any Sharon Shannon? No, I kept <laughs> asking your man for requests, and he had no word of English, like. Yeah, no. That was our week. Crazy week. And at loan, you have to look it up, lads. At, at loan is named after a fella that turned into a bird. <laughs> Honestly, like, yeah, it's not even Noah's news yet. Like, he's just getting outrageous. 
at loan, whatever it is, ask Elga, ah, loan or whatever. Ah, loan, yeah. It's a fella who turned into a bird. Right. It's an old story. Yeah. It must be, I think it means Lewin's place then. So Lewin turned yeah. into a bird. He Jesus. did bite. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. There's some useless <laughs> information. <laughs> um, we also went to Club Players Awards, Johnny. Ah, uh, some crack. We were in Croke Park last night. Mm. Um, there's a big, fair big function room there in Croke Park. If you're up, if you ever go to a game on premium level, you'll see this, the Hogan Suite. Oh, and it's hey, hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, premium uh, level, boy. It's class. Yeah, it's cool, yeah. It's a cool room. And um, Kieran Malai of Galway got, Curry he got Footballer of the Year in the yeah. game. And you'll know him because he's the only man in the GEA with, like, a top knot. Yeah, he looks like he should be, like, lead singer in a rock band. <laughs> Like a 90s punk band But he plays like a rock a rock star Like you know He's, he's some here in the football But his hair is shaved Around the sides mm. Undercut job like And then a ponytail on top Yeah And I had to say it to him I was like Lad your hair is mental Yeah <laughs> there, There's two mead lads With uh, top knots And uh, Oh sorry yeah yeah Killian O'Sullivan And the other lad Who broke his elbow I can't remember But I remember a bit, It was at a mead league match there And it was the first league match We went to And my dad just turns around to me And goes just a lot of the mead lads have ponytails. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't impressed. He wasn't impressed with that? No, he was like, oh. just seeing his head, he's like, Colin O'Rourke wouldn't have had a ponytail. Uh. <laughs> Colin O'Rourke would have pulled the head off a lad with a ponytail, yeah. I'd say. We had great crack then. We were going around interviewing people uh, on the big screen and we ruined TJ Reid. Yeah, we could crack the TJ. To within an inch of his life. <laughs> and then I tried to ruin Henry Shefflin and he's just... Nah. That, uh, not much crack now to he's, he's one of the greatest hurlers of all time But he's not much crack <laughs> Henry if you're listening Come on now Lighten yeah, up We love you really Henry um, Yeah the boys were like <laughs> The Valley Hill lads were like Oh he's class He's some manager Like if they said They said honestly like He's a brilliant manager Yeah Never talks to us <laughs> 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 We went down and had a chat With the Mullinocta fellas mm. And um, they were great crack They gave a couple of great lines as well, didn't they? Oh he was so funny The Money Octavo He's there from Absolute middle nor a Longford like mm. And we were like You know are you enjoying the night And he was like Yeah the father is there And when the starters Came out was prawns Jesse didn't know what it was <laughs> <laughs> He didn't know which was the top Which was the bottom <laughs> Whether he should eat it Or to, oh, what the fuck do with it <laughs> It was funny They were like We were trying to get funny content And some of the GA players Are quite guarded They're like mm. As soon as the mic comes on They're like Oh yeah, obviously it was a great season and so thanks funny very like, much to everybody for supporting us and off the mic you'd be having a full blown conversation, with them, laughing and joking, and then you'd be like, right, sure, look, we'll do this. So you know, great year for you. Yeah, you know, game of two halves, like Jesus Christ, give us, give us, give us the real you. Obviously, Crocs are a great side, and we're just <laughs> going to go out and do our best now. And yeah. then, then sometimes they'd lighten up, and we're like, you know, and and what was the celebrations like? And, Oh fuck yeah Some session like, <laughs> like, oh, well, We can't use that now So <laughs> There was nowhere in between They were like really guarded And then they'd lighten up Oh the session was unreal like, With a bonfire A fellow got naked And jumped into it No like, well, we Can't use that But thanks One extreme to another A great week um, This week coming up We've got uh, the Trinity Ball We're at the Trinity Ball On Friday night Yeah And then we've got a show In Waterford On the Saturday night That's all that was well down In the Theatre Royal Theatres Always in theatres huh? yeah. Some carry on There's still tickets left For Carrick on Shannon uh, Wexford sold out During the week as well yeah, uh, whatever to do, Nace, Kilkenny, Cork. They're somewhere. all gone. The only one you can go to is Carrick and Shannon in Leitrim, and that's on the April 26th to johnnies.e for all of those ticket links. And just quick, we went out a little bit, a, a bit in last night. After we, oh, <coughs> we did, we did. <laughs> and um, I had to accept now this morning we're famous. Yeah, I uh, had the realisation. I had the realisation now. We're, we're famous, famous. We're like a well-known lad, like. Traffic uh, wardens in a small town. Yeah, nah. There they are now, the fuckers. The prick, there he is. <laughs> I don't know, last night was different now. Yeah? Ah, uh, I got stopped so long. Some crap. But everyone is very nice, like, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love when people say they love the podcast. Yeah. Do you know? But, like, the lads coming up trying to headbutt me, so I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. We actually don't. We, thank God we don't get abuse. We're, we're very lucky. Um, and thanks yeah. to everybody who does come up to us. And But, but if we're eating... <laughs> Do not disturb Johnny B if, if there's a half a chicken wrap hanging out of that man's mouth. But do an approach with fear. Wild beast eating. Uh. Feeding time. Okay, topic number one. At this stage in our careers, we've done a fair bit of globetrotting. And everywhere we go, tipping rules are different to here in Ireland. According to TripAdvisor, there's not a strong tipping culture in Ireland. But many locals and visitors tend to tip for certain services. In particular, restaurants, taxis, personal services like hairdress and stuff like that. As a rough guide... Uh, TripAdvisor suggests tipping 10% of the service you're paying for. Tipping, tipping, tipping. Johnny. Uh, yeah, so when we went to America, this is like the home 
of tipping, um, we actually have to ask people. Like, if you're going to America for the first time, ask the locals about tipping because if you do not tip, they'll just say it to you. Yeah. Where's the service charge? Like, they'll just fuck you out of it. Yeah. They're very. Fl- Remember the, time we, the first time we got a taxi? Like, we paid him the money. Like, and I was like, I don't know. Do you tip a taxi driver out there? And I was like, dude, the tip. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Fucking sound lad, yeah. yeah. Barman out in America. 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Barman out in America. <clears throat> oh my God. So their, their wages, they're telling us, their wages are actually so shite that it pretty much just pays your standard tax, mm. your PSI or whatever out there. So you're actually not getting any wages, really. You're living off the tips. Tipping but, is mass, but 20%. But yeah, tipping, tipping is expensive, as we all know from our time in America. But the thing is, they're good staff. Out of class. Like, they're really good barmen. They're really good waitresses or waiters. Like, they're, they are really good. Like, one time we went into the Ramblin' House mm. in, in New York and your one went above and beyond, made us iced coffees. They didn't even do them. I'd say she just fucking dug ice up out of somewhere and made these iced coffees. And, like, you don't mind tipping for that. But then, like, in America, when we went to California, we went to McDonald's and got something. And I was like, do I tip your one? And then I was like, no. Because I was like, can I get a quarter pound meal? And she was like... <laughs> An apple pie? Yeah! <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. Quarter pound meal. And she was like, an apple pie. I was like, are you fucking stupid? Are you dense? Like? I thought we were on a hidden camera show or yeah, something. Yeah, right? honestly. I you just like, got punked. Ashton Kutcher was going to jump out yeah. behind the counter. like. I was looking at her and I was just thinking, there's no way you're getting a dollar tip off me, girl, <laughs> if you think I'm asking for an apple pie. Like, my accent isn't great at the best of times, but fuck me, you know. You just start getting louder at her. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Quarter pound... <laughs> Jump up the counter. <laughs> Quarter pounder meal, kid. <laughs> if I said I want an apple pie, kid, I would have said it. Sound. Throw, t- throw the quart pounder there, kid. Oh, throw them out. <laughs> Quarter pounder, throw them out. Um, tipping, right? Barmen. <clears throat> yeah. Drink in America is expensive enough, too. It's saucy, yeah. So, it's we six, went... $6.7, not 6 It depends where you go. Like, yeah. if the city, some of the cities, like, like Chicago, certain places... Out by Wrigley Field, like it'd be mm. cheap enough. Like mm. I think you could get like six bottles of beer in a. No, this is years ago when I was in Chicago. You get you know a bucket of ice mm. and six Coors Light or Bud Light for twenty dollars or something. So okay, that's not too bad. But like that's we we went into a bar and said there's two or three of us like, and we probably left a hundred dollars there, and you'd give your man twenty quid. Mm. Yeah, it's so weird. But like you can leave your money in the counter out there, and oh. he'll and he'll just help himself. Like he'll work away, and you know. But tell you, you would not leave your money <laughs> on the counter in care or Ross Gray or, you know. Well, out in a country pub, no, you would. Yeah. In, mm-hmm. our, in our pub at home, you would, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, like, unless it was a really busy night or whatever, there's yeah. certain lads that come in and they have their spot yeah. at the bar and you nobody else sits yeah. there and they'd leave the, whatever, 50 euro on the table and you just... Help yourself. The yeah. one that blew me away in America was um, bar ma- um, a beer mat. Mm. So I'd be drinking and I'd talk to the barman and I'd say, oh, you know, get more a drink. Yeah. And he'd just throw a beer mat down in front of you and he'd know Mara has a drink ahead of her there now. Yeah, they're mm. so good. I, like, How do they keep a track of it? Like, the lads there would have two or three beer mats and that'd be a drink. And then they'd say to the barman, like, oh, get yourself one. Mm. And then if you were there for a while, he'd buy you one. Yeah. The barman, out of his own pocket, would buy you a drink because, like, it's all working up towards a really good tip. I didn't know where I was at one stage. I had to <laughs> say to the barman, look... How many drinks have I ahead of me now? Yeah. Or, or like, where are we? And how much do I owe you? This, this is getting out of hand, lad. How many drinks have I behind me? Yeah. Do you know what I mean, lad? I, I, I was thinking, like, yeah. Really <laughs> <laughs> What's my name? <laughs> I was thinking, like, this lad now is is taking me for a ride here. He's going to take the shoes off my feet and everything, like. He'd be like, no, there you go. I was like, yes, that, but that wasn't too expensive. He'd be like, you owe me two grand. <laughs> do you know? It's hard, it's hard to know. That's tipping. The old Brendan Grace joke. What was that? Brendan Grace goes into the pub the next morning and he's dying. He says, "Your man." Oh, was I in here last night? And your man says, yeah. Did I spend much? And your man's like, oh, God, you spent about 100 euro. Thank God, I thought I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the thing about tipping out there is, if we brought tipping into bars in Ireland, I think the service would get better. But you mm. see, they have dollar bills. Yeah. And dollar bills are ideal for tipping because yeah. they're, they're paper. Like, do you know you don't want to be giving somebody a tip in coins. Yeah, imagine like putting a euro down, you'd be like, fuck off, that's it's only a euro. If you're tipping a child, or giving like, you know, yeah. child yeah. 50p to go down to shop. No, like, you know. don't spend it all in the one shop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a bit derogatory, I think. To be I, I never worked in an industry where I got tipped, but I imagine it feels weird. I used to work um, when I was like in transition year, I worked in Super Value in Ross Gray. You don't get tipped in Super Value. You do, lad. 
you bring the trolleys out to the car for the, for the old ladies. Yeah. Yeah. It's like 70 euro in. You see what happens is you bring the trolley out. Mm. And then you stay looking at them long enough. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, you can bring the trolley back in. You'll be like, sound, yeah, no water. And then you just like plug the trolley in and get, get the two euro. I was walking around the car park like Don Carleone, but big massive pocket on me, jingling away. Around 70 euro on two euro coins. <laughs> Swear to God. I nearly had to bank it. I had to bank it half a dr- during the day. Yeah, if there was a euro note or a two euro note, mm. you feel better you about tipping people. Yeah. 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 Get, get, we're going to get a petition signed there, get it off to the government. Two euro bill. We're going to get it out. I don't know if tipping people is weird. Like, where were we in? We were in a, doing a gig mm. and. Um, this woman, like the restaurant was just open and she looked after us really well. Mm-hmm. So we had it, it over in the corner. And then uh, you paid on the card or whatever. And then we're like, oh, we should tip her. And then I just walked in and like put, handed her a fiver and walked back out. I was like, that felt so weird. <laughs> should I have given her more? I don't know. You definitely should have given her more than a fiver, you. <laughs> a fiver is a good tip for a dinner, is it? Ah, yeah, well, yeah. we didn't get much in fairness. Yeah, it's like if you're, well, if you're tipping for a meal, it's like 12.5%. That's usually what the service charge is. So, like, just I always divide what the meal is by eight and okay. whatever that is. And give them that. I feel obliged, mm. though, now to leave, like, a good tip. Good tips now because people you know. You don't us. want anyone giving out about you. Yeah, people <laughs> know us now that you can't, like, you go into a restaurant and they go, had that Latin two Johnnies in. What a miserable bastard. <laughs> but you what know? if the service is bad? Would you not tip then? I'm I wouldn't, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. Like, you never complain. If I, if I, yeah, if I asked for a steak and she brought me out a shepherd's pie, I'd be like, mm, look, I'll just have to make do now. <laughs> and I'd eat the shepherd's pie. And if she come over and said, is that all right for you? I'd be like, lovely. Lo- lovely. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's lovely. Yeah, that's great. Thanks very much. I just don't do, compl- I can't complain. Yeah, you can't do confrontation at all. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm starting to get a bit better now if people are ignorant. Like, I'll just be completely pig ignorant back to them then. I think that's, that's <laughs> the one thing. Ignorance kills me. Mistakes happen. Okay, so <clears throat> on staff, right, when I used to be in the cover band, the weddings we'd be at, mm. hotel bar staff, a lot of them were students. They did not give a shit. Yeah. They never broke a sweat. They were very slow. They were not being tipped. A vast majority of, like, people in the service industry, you know, obviously there is people there and it's their career and, and all that, but a lot of them, I'd say, are... Part time, yeah. Part time, your college, you know, college goers or school goers who are working there as their part time job, and for that reason, that's probably why the service isn't that incredible. They know they're not going to be there for the rest of their life. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, like you know. But in America, it's a career. Yeah. Because yeah. of tipping. Because you make good money. Yeah, you get better at it, and you tip. People yeah. tip better. And to the woman in Freshie at this morning when we asked her for a smoothie, <laughs> she seemed surprised by it. That's your fucking job, love. <laughs> you know what I mean. We're like, oh, can we get two smoothies? She's like, oh. <laughs> what do you think we're going to ask for? Like, you know what I mean? I wasn't going to win buying a suit jacket off you, love, and freshy like. So, yeah, just if you're listening there, woman. <laughs> um, I think tip and work stuff. I think you get better service. Definitely, and it makes the staff feel valued as well. Like, you know, I used to get an old bottle of wine there as a tip for, for um, when I used to work in Super Value. Someone like me and get the turkey off you and then we throw you a bottle of wine or a few quid like. Cheers. Yeah, and you feel like, oh, that's great. Like, you know, I'll give them the good meat next week. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to stop spitting yeah. in her mints. Yeah. It's lame, right? Never happened. To, w- but what do you think about in a situation, right? If you give somebody a tip and then they have to put those tips into a pool and it gets. Yeah. <clears throat> that's where it gets messy. Mm. So if you tip a waiter, does the chef get a slice of the pie then? No. He could be a. Oh, they do in some places. Yeah, they do. That, I disagree with that. Yeah, yeah. Place and care doing that. Yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, mm. everybody gets a, a slice of the pie. Yeah, and I hate you know as well when you're paying with card and the service charge comes up. It's like no, I'd never because you don't know where that is. money's going. Yeah. So. Mm. Is it being declared then? Isn't a whole lot of fucking kettle of fish. Yeah, like. and I I always leave coins on the table or notes on the table. So whenever. The yeah. Mm. Paying hard cash. Yeah, because you you want to tip the person directly. You're not. Yeah. You're paying somebody for their service. So. No. Yeah. Hundred percent. I think that's tip. I got a fiver once when I was an altar boy. Yeah, but... Yeah, but was that for a funeral what, or a wedding? What <laughs> service did you provide? <laughs> <laughs> you know, bread, wine. <laughs> Rang the bell a couple of times. Wedding Were you an altar boy, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Altar boy, you some crack. <laughs> Ooh, what's the story? <laughs> tell it, go on, tell it, now, tell, it. <laughs> tell it. We had the robes, you know. <laughs> the big white robes, down to your shoes, like. <laughs> Gonzo served mass one day, just in his jocks, like. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't tell anyone only me that just for the crack like <laughs> Some sneer like, ah here. So 
Are we in agreement tipping is a good thing? Yeah, but would it work in Ireland? Not sure. Like, it does go on. It does go on, yeah. Do you, do you tip your hairdresser? Uh, I, did, I didn't always. Because I, I always feel like sometimes you're paying by card at the counter. Yeah. And then like sometimes you're paying the receptionist. So you're not putting the money directly into your hairdresser's yeah. hand. So mm. it's like, it's awkward. Like not every, like there's two t- people that I would always try and tip. It's my hairdresser and the person who does my eyebrows because you want them... Especially with the eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Don't fuck it up. Yeah. 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 So I think that's the thing as well. If there was more transparency in the tip, it would probably work better mm. in Ireland. Do you know what I mean? As you said, it, unless you put it in someone's hand directly, you don't know if they're going to get it. or. And then the thing is, in restaurants, someone is like um, serving you the whole time. And then another girl comes down with the bill. Like, do you give her the money? Like, you know, it's the other girl you want to tip, really. Yeah. She, she's, been, she's been looking after you. So... And then some wait- waiters like are just shit, and you'd be like, <laughs> "I don't really feel obliged to tip." So, do we have a choice? Do we have a choice, or do yeah. you have to tip in a restaurant? No, no you don't. <clears throat> From I wonder, we're going to do that now. Is ask a few restaurants and people listening. What percentage of people tip in a restaurant? Yeah, I imagine just most people would. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I would always tip in a restaurant. We're going to have to know. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Everyone's going to watch him. We'll be tipping the lads in Junction 14 now, man. The raps and everything. I, 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 I did. Yeah. I, I tipped, well, they deserve it. I, I tipped a, a woman in Junction 14 and uh, I, I left the money and she actually walked over to me and was like, you, f- you forgot your money. <laughs> I'd never tip in a taxi, though. I, don't, I didn't realize that was a thing, so. No, right. I've never tipped in a taxi. Uh, no, we did. In, in Ireland, no. Well, he was an incredible taxi driver. Yeah. There's an option on like the My Taxi app all those apps as an option to tip yeah and then we, we did we left him a tip because we got into the taxi and he was like how is boys and we were like we're hung over I'll shut up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was perfect and then Johnny was like oh man I've got a banging headache and then your man was like do you want a tablet or Johnny was like oh if you have one yeah and he like got out a seat and handed it back to Johnny and Johnny was like oh sound and he was like I suppose you'll want water as well Pulled out a bottle of water. I was like, fucking hell. I was like, any chance for no chicken roll there with cheese on it? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh. he didn't whip that out. What do you have for the day, lad? Want to come <laughs> hang around with us? Do you want to be our friend? <laughs> uh, so tip, TIP, to incentivize promptitude. That's what it stands for. Is it? TIP, yeah. It's originally a European thing. These have it in taverns, whatever it was. Um, and there was a jar. And then it came into America after the, the Great Depression when people couldn't afford to pay their staff. They would put up the signs... Um, Please tip because we're a fucking skint. Okay. Or whatever, like. And then that's. It only, it only, so it only came into America in the Great Depression. What's that? 1920s, 30s? Mm. Yeah, 1930s, yeah. Yeah, it only came into America then. And then they just rolled with it. Lad, you're just enlightening the listeners of this podcast every week. A little so, bit. So get in touch. Give us your feedback on tipping. Do you leave a tip? Have you ever had any funny stories about tipping or anything? We want to know everything about Last week he reviewed the first Harry Potter film Giving it a 5 out of 10 Describing it as a little far fetch. Lord knows what he's got in store for us this week It's time for Noel Furlong And it's time for Noel's News Noel's News It's Noel's News I'm young for that Hi Noel, how are you? I'm severely hungover Are you? <laughs> we out last night? Obviously. <laughs> who, who are you with? In Dermature, the usual fucking heavies. <laughs> Where were you? Las Vegas. We're in the fucking shamrock. <laughs> <Where are you? laughs> fucking hell. It's like milk in the fridge, bite. <laughs> Tan a mug. Me and Dermot propping up the shamrock, bite. Um, I want to ask you an issue last week on uh, Maureen's topic. You wouldn't go into the shop and buy a tampon? No. Do you not like French food? <laughs> Let's say you're thinking of something else there and all. You want a pastry with a bit of cheese? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not a tampon. What is it? A jambon. Oh, a fucking jambon! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I was wondering. <laughs> What's the other thing? It's, um... It's... Slacks, I think you should explain it. Uh, it's like a plug young ones put in when they're menstruating and, they're, you know, fill a gap, Noel, you know. Be the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I haven't bought to my name to be fair now. Um, I want to tell you about a very eagerly anticipated matchup 
They owe more than the Munster final now. Okay. This is Petro Poroshenko, who is, of course, the president of Ukraine, and Volodymyr Zelensky. It's like Chip and Cork, boy. <laughs> well, they're fucking, they're going at it. I brought in the Ukraine, right? Because the Ukraine, okay, is corrupt as fuck. I don't mind saying that now, okay? The county council job out there in the whole place, <laughs> right? The more money going, money going everywhere. And but the, the county council is gas, actually. Did like if you want something done, do you know, pothole filled, council house, fucking new scullery for the mother, whatever. You get on to the local councillor, right? Scullery. And my brother, Eddie the Ferret, as we call him, because <laughs> he loved old ferrets, and he's carried around the ferrets with him all the time. He got a job one time with the council, right? And that evening, four different county... <laughs> <laughs> Eddie the Ferret. He was only carrying around ferrets. <laughs> All right, straighten up. <clears throat> that evening, after he got the job... Fuck's <laughs> sake! Four county councillors called to the house. All claiming they got him the job. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's, that's fucking, that's true story. They all claim, I got it the job. I got it the job. He made no odds. He lost the job within a week. <laughs> <laughs> I should have fucking, he had a ferret in his pocket. <laughs> inside an office. And, <laughs> and then the ferret jumped out and bite a child in the nose. <laughs> so the fucking four councillors weren't long about distancing themselves <laughs> from the fucking job then. And <laughs> that child actually, when he got bitten in the nose, and then he went home, and went to cover in the silage pit that evening, and then the nose get infected, and he lost all feeling in his nose. <laughs> <laughs> and he was saying, <laughs> he was going around saying, Daddy, where's my nose? <laughs> And he lost all sense of smell. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and he never smelled again. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't let it hold him back. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> he didn't let it hold him back. He no smell. He couldn't feel his nose. Daddy, where's my nose? <laughs> <laughs> and that child. Do you know who he grew up to be? <laughs> Do you know who that child grew up to be? <laughs> Tiger Woods. <laughs> Tiger Woods, bye. That's a fact. That's a fact. And, and that is why, that is why Tiger Woods can read minds. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that about Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. And that's partly why he's so good at the golf. Because he knows what the other man is going to do and he can block it. I don't think you <laughs> block something. <laughs> that's a fact. So that was Tiger Woods. He got bit by one of Eddie's ferrets. And the Ukraine, as I <laughs> before I got on top of the first moment, but the Ukraine, there's a comedian running for president. There's a fact. Everyone's favorite funny man, Volodymyr Zelensky, he's in the election and he's out in front. Okay. It looks like he's going to win the thing. And he acts too. He's in a TV show called Servant of the People. 
It sounds shite, and it is. I watched it, and I'm four seasons in now, and I still can't understand the fucking word anyone's saying. <laughs> fucking, tis in Ukrainian, like, but you get the gist of it, you know. So I'm, I'll probably finish it off anyway at this stage now. It's better than Fair City anyway. But in the in the t- in the television show, he plays a teacher who goes on a rant inside in the tear room, and he's giving out about the government, right? And someone films it, and it goes viral. Which is went viral, the poor devil. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be lucky to come out of that. <laughs> well, people loved his rant. And then, bang, he gets elected president. In the television show. And then in real life, he's actually one of a president. Whoa. And he's, he's only a comedian. And he got 30% of the vote. And uh, the incumbent then got 16% of the vote. But it was a heap of lads going for it. So now they... Uh, fucking rule out a hair for them and have a second water another have another go but he has challenged his opponent to a debate in a stadium wow yeah he wanted the whole town to go to it the whole fucking place is going like a farmer's wedding and in the Ukraine they're trying to get away from Russia right because the Russians kind of half invaded them about five years ago but it's not working they're still in the same spot okay they haven't got away from Russia but this comedian Candidate, he's a bit pro Russian. He speaks Russian. And I'd always be wary of the Russians. Do you know? Did you know that guitar player with U2, The Edge, he can speak fluent Russian? Oh. Yeah, that's a fact. And some people, like this has led some people to believe that he's actually a covert agent for the Russian government. And I heard that. He have a chip implanted in his head. <laughs> and that is why he always wears the cap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> hard to know which way that'll go. You went deep into research in this week. <laughs> no, I heard that. I heard that down to Shamrock. <laughs> that he was a, a covert agent for the Russian government now. How true that is, I don't know. But it was... Um, Huey was telling me, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, that's it, yeah. The comedian looks like he's going to be the next oh. president of Russia. Anyway. And you think you're going well, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, now you probably heard about the new laws been passed uh, by the Sultan of Brunei. Mm. Mm. Um, he's the king of the little country, Brunei. And it's a small little piece out there in Malaysia. Um, kind of a rainforesty kind of spot, bit of a Donegal vibe going on. And we've actually never mentioned Donegal on me Noel's news before. Oh. But it's okay, they don't have internet. So <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. Now the Sultan, he's mad for the old Islam. He can't he all morning new night, he loves the Islam. Okay? It's like Dermot and funerals. <laughs> Man can't go to no funerals. I swear to God. Do you know why he goes to funerals? Why? Sandwiches. <laughs> I swear the only reason he goes to mass is for the Holy Communion. <laughs> he's some man for the free grub. Huh? Some man for the free grub. Go to mass for the body of Christ. So the Sultan has said anyone caught being gay would be stoned to death. <clears throat> Bad man. Yeah. It's fucking that. awful. But do you know what the funny thing is? The Sultan of Brunei is the gayest name I've ever heard. <laughs> he fucking sounds like an unreleased Elton John album. <laughs> the Sultan of Brunei. <laughs> you, and he goes around, he wears a, a fancy robe. And he was silk cap. He's like he's in a bad musical. This Have you ever seen a p- picture of him? No. I've oh. seen a picture of his car. It's like a gold limousine, and it's like that's pretty. No. No. <laughs> you stone him to death. <laughs> um, but she's. I haven't seen anyone stoned to death since Charlie High's time. <laughs> he kind of before your time. Ever, ever so slightly, yeah. Terry High was the last king of Ireland. <laughs> That's a fact. And my father, God rest him now, he, he was a staunch hahi man. Was he? Oh, he wouldn't have a bad word Yeah. said about CJ. Right? And my father told me one time that Charlie High was a direct descendant of St. Patrick. <laughs> I didn't even know St. Patrick had children. <laughs> you know, That's just what the father told me. Um, so the Sultan of Brunei, he's kind of the Asian version of Hahi. Okay. Um, and other new uh, laws include: you can be stoned to death 
for adultery. I fucking hope they don't come into Tipperary. <laughs> <laughs> if you're caught stealing, you can have your arm cut off. That's fact. Whoa. I wouldn't mind that now. That sounds about fair enough. And there's another one then. Lesbian sex. This doesn't apply to you now. <laughs> but you, you won't be stoned to death for that. Um, the punishment is 40 lashes of a whip. Ooh. Or 40 strokes of of the cane which is fucking refusing to stroke the cane got him there in the first place so this <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god oh my god oh. Oh. I can't agree with this oh, fucking, that's, yeah. it's terrible Very it's fucking bad. terrible what he's at out there right Stress. people should be allowed like people want to ride let them ride mm. if the two women there and they want to get down growl at the badger or whatever they call it oh, then you know what I mean fellas want to stroke the cane stroke the cane <laughs> None of my business what to do. Would you be at that yourself? You would. What? Stroking the cane. Shake, no. Shaking the bottle. <laughs> of course. Of course not. Fucking I never did it. No? Not at all. Why? Cousin of mine played with himself once. <laughs> <laughs> and when he woke up the next morning. <laughs> when he woke up the next morning. He could talk to animals. <laughs> <laughs> now they couldn't talk back <laughs> <laughs> he could talk to you <laughs> crazy man I found him in Clamel one night having an argument with a cocker spaniel <laughs> <laughs> do you know so just just to be mindful of it now <laughs> just just to be aware of it now you wicked man my. um Brunei, they have loads of money. Fucking rich out oil. They have loads of oil. Big money. Down by. <laughs> so, the Sultan, he's one of the richest men going. He's up there with Hahi, like. And, but just like Hahi, I think the Sultan of Brunei is not to be trusted. He not not to be crossed. A lot of people don't know. But Charlie Hahi actually invented asthma <laughs> that's a fact that's a fact and it was a way it was a way to kind of keep people down <laughs> so um, ju just to be mindful of it now um, the Brunei they have um, an investment fund and they, they buy things they have a load of hotels okay and um, people have started a campaign to boycott these hotels because they don't agree what he's doing. So the next time you're in LA, don't stay at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Okay. Yes. Just get digs off an Irish lad or something. <laughs> okay. That's awful. Carry on. Fucking prick. Um, this week's Nose News is brought to you <laughs> by... Oh, no. By <laughs> Chunky Hayes <laughs> Enterprises. <laughs> Yes, everyone's favorite chipper owner <laughs> has branched out. So I have a, I have a script here. Are, are, you, are you sponsored again? Is this? Are you getting paid for this? Yes, cash. <laughs> okay. So let me introduce to you, Hayes's whiskey. <laughs> Last year, Chunky Hayes started brewing whiskey out the back of his chipper, and now he presents to you a beautiful. Rich flavored. It says it's been aged for twelve years, but he fucking started last year. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, Hayes' whiskey is the spirit of Bali. Feel the mountain wind on your face. Hayes' whiskey will put hair on your chest, a glint in your eye, and little green dots in your shit. <laughs> <laughs> um Chunky hadn't quite started that out. <laughs> Yeah, but you will have the night of your life. <laughs> you drink that stuff. Oh, you'll take a rough your coma. Tell you that now. <laughs> you may lose the ability to speak. <laughs> you might even fight a lot. <laughs> Must be over 25 to drink it. <laughs> Don't mix it with coke. You'll only ruin the coke. 
You'll wake up the next morning feeling like a stubbed out fag. <laughs> Hazel whiskey. The smell of not graffin. Feel the wind in your hair as you drink in our passion. Just drunk, he's getting good with the words, right? <laughs> Special <laughs> gift box available. Comes with two glasses, especially stolen from the Shamrock Towns. <laughs> also, exclu- exclusive to the Two Jimmies podcast, each six pack comes with a box of Gaviscon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're having the official launch party uh, next Tuesday in the Chipper. In the Chipper. Yeah. And entertainment on the night is provided by DJ Kieran. <laughs> DJ Kieran. Yeah. Now, that's just his stage name. <laughs> <laughs> What's his actual name? Frank Laffin. <laughs> So, um, the newspapers will all be in. I've invited <laughs> Ireland's Eye and um, apparently Nationwide are sending down a crew. <laughs> Fucking Marty Whelan right in half town again. Um, I remember. You might not remember. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't get through this. <laughs> oh no! Uncle, <laughs> you probably don't remember the first time Marty Whelan was down, do you? <laughs> no. Fucking or la- last time Marty was down, he um he pulled up outside the Shamrock, and he big fucking fancy car, and they were all out fucking kissing his arse, <laughs> and he came in then he sat up beside himself in Dermot, and um he had the key, you know, and he put it up on the counter and he said, "See that key, boys? Now watch this," and he pressed the button, and out the window we could see. The car would lock, and all the wing mirrors and all would turn in. Oh, you know yeah, this yeah. red fucking fancy job, thinking he was a dog's bollocks, and he put the key up in the counter. And I took out my old Yale key from the old night latch at home. <laughs> the night latch. And I put it up in the counter, and I said, "See that key, Marty? When I go home, and I put that, all I have to do, all I have to do, is put that key in the door, and the dinner is ready." <laughs> <laughs> Oh and my fucking God. quieted him. <laughs> that quieted him, did it? Yeah. So, Marty is going to come down, hopefully, and do a bit nationwide for the launch of Chunky Hayes' Whiskey. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks very much, Sean. Drive on, boys. <laughs> drive it, drive it, drive it. Menstruation was her topic last week. <laughs> Maura, what have you got for us this week, Maura's mystery topic? <laughs> I just put that in the script. Yeah. Menstruation. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, this week's mystery topic is kissing and telling. And I want to get your opinion on it. Oh, uh, oh shit, shit. Uh, so a friend of mine, I met her for lunch yesterday, and she said one of her work colleagues listens to the podcast and said, I could never date more because she just talked about the date on the podcast. For the sake of clarity, I'd never talk about someone which, uh, I dated without their permission unless they'd really screwed me over uh, <laughs> and it's time to dish out a bit of karma. But um, say, for instance, the ATM story, I did have the permission from that person um, provided, uh, to tell that story, provided I took a 40% cut uh, as opposed to 50% cut. A point Niji. Anyway, I do have permission to tell this story because it's a hypothetical situation. About, um, it's not, it's a, a real story, but it's, um, I'm not using names here. So my friend said I could tell it. Right? Um, over Christmas, she had a booty call with a lad. They met on a night out. They didn't really know each other, They but they'd mutual friends. Uh, uh, they're a bit of sliding to DMs. Anyway, all fun was had. Both sides agreed to keep it strictly between themselves. Um, then at a social function about two, min- uh, two months later, she met a, a different set of friends. After a few drinks, they said to her, "Just I heard you uh, jostled with your lad. Uh, we'll call this lad, lad David. And she was like, uh, how did you find out about that? And they said that David's mate, we'll call him Paul. Uh, oh, uh, Paul, uh, well, uh, David told Paul and Paul told us. So she was like, uh, for fuck's sake, like, you know, because she had kept it quiet. She mm. hadn't told any of their yeah. friends. Um, so my question is, is it, uh, do you think this lad is outlined for telling his mate? And do you think men are worse for kissing and telling? Because my personal perspective is that um, men say, oh, like people say, oh, women love to gossip. But I think certain men 
love to brag about their sexual contest and I think that reflects poorly on them. It's like they're insecure, so. Thanks for that, Mara. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so was your man out of line for telling his mates? Yes. Yeah, if they agreed not to tell, then don't tell. But, yeah. His, friend, his friend is the problem Yeah, here. his friend is out of line. His friend's out of line. It's not your story to tell, kid. Yeah. Yeah. That would be that would be my thing. But then, you have to respect her wishes if she wanted to keep this rendezvous mm. between the two of them. There could be things at stake. Yeah, you know we don't know the we don't know the background here. There could be things to lose, lad. Could be a lot to lose. Shut your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> so basically. Yeah, Ar- earning board job. That's that's the thing we're kissing and telling though. You have to, you know. Yes, that's always a possibility. It's yeah. always a possibility to come out. Yeah, do you Take, think men do kiss and tell a lot more than women? You see, like yeah, as you said there, the thing is, oh, women love to gossip. Mm. I think men are worse, lads. Yeah. yeah, a couple of my friends are nosy bastards. <laughs> Men love to say it about women. Mm. I I think so. I've often heard that now. Mm. Oh, that one, like you know, under yeah, your yeah. breath, lads, be saying it about a young one. Mm. Yeah, cut it out, lads. Yeah, there is a lot of that. They want us there showing a bit more respect. Are men worse than women? I don't know. Women wouldn't be telling us, like <laughs> you know, telling you women women can keep things qu- quiet as well. Like, <laughs> you know, that's not speaking from experience or anything like that, but like yeah. Some crafty women out there. <laughs> yeah, well, this is it. Like, I think, um, yeah, I think lads, if they're kissing and telling, like, it's very immature as well. Like, yeah. maybe when you're 14 or 15 and you're like, oh, I shifted her. Uh, I, I topped her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A bit of outside the jumper boo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, we're all like that. Like, you know, it's big. You yeah. know, I'm sure it's a big moment touching your first boob, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, terrific. Yeah. Milestone. Yeah. Like a bag of sand. <laughs> <laughs> who was she, lad? <laughs> no, but yeah. this week, who was your first boob? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's thing. There is that bravado with lads kind of down the pub. Oh, tell the boys now who is with or whatever, like. Yeah. Whereas I think girls are a bit more kind of... I'd pot away now and do my own thing. What do you think, Mara? Um, kissing and telling... Maybe if a lad was good in bed, you might give an L recommendation. You might say, yeah. But then you couldn't. You, you shouldn't go into details. Tripadvisor like. job, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yelp review. He says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he started well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, but then he, uh, yeah, wouldn't do a certain thing. I'm sure then. The <laughs> Next week on Mara's mystery topic, Mara breaks down intercourse. <laughs> Blow by blow. <laughs> Ins and outs. Everything, the whole lot. <laughs> yeah. If you had to call it, Johnny, who's worse, men or women? Men. Do think so? Yeah. Yeah, but sure we would know. Women could be talking. We should put this out to the podcast listeners then. Podcast listeners, who's worse to gossip, men or women? We want your feedback. We want to know. We do a poll as well during the week. Mm. We'll, 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 we'll find this out one way or the other. Look, if and if you, you are going kissing, don't be doing the telling, right? Yeah. But just, I think, before you get into it, Know that that's always a possibility. Yeah. Mm, yep. Very true. Yeah. Is and lads, if you wear you a screenshot. Oh, lad. You wear Leave your screen- phones at the door, love. Yeah. <laughs> Maura, do you think the fact that you might talk about it on a podcast would put lads off? Oh, but I, I think lads think that I do talk about. Then. Like, yeah. But a, d- like, a date, like. Yeah, but I wouldn't do it without their permission. I'd say lads be dying to go on a date with you and they'd yeah. be like, I can't wait to tune into the podcast, see if you mentions me. <laughs> like, genuinely, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Sure, you're famous now, Maureen. Uh, you know. Oh, can I say a shout out to Carrie, who I met during the week, and she... Let's not get fucking carried away <laughs> now, Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on, Carrie, Carrie. No, she, uh, I, I met her, I was walking back up from getting my hand x-rayed for the last time, hopefully, and uh, somebody stopped me and goes, Maura, and I was like, oh, somebody from work, and I didn't know who she was, and then she's like, oh, I'm just listening to the podcast, and she got really fangirl, and then kind of like scarpered away, and I was like, that was awkward for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Maura, mate. Everybody knows, you know, you get away with nothing. No more kissing and telling. <laughs> All right, topic number two, you may remember um, my story of taking up various lesser known sports in a bid to get to the community games in Mosny from a few podcasts ago and Alan got in touch and he said, hi lads, I think it would be great if you did a topic of minority sports in Ireland. As a born and bred Ross Cray man who ended up representing Ireland three times in cricket in 2010, it would be great to get the lads to take on cricket and other minority sports. My cousin kind of fell into playing it and dragged Myself, my brother and a few neighbours into it. The slagging we used to get for playing it was awful, especially as an extremely shy youngster. And I'm sure others who play minority sports might have been in the same boat. So we've decided to discuss what sports Irish people should get more involved in and what would be encouraged. Sports, Johnny. Yeah, cricket is a funny one. Um, there was a lad I used to meet in the gym in care. He was going to school in Rockwell. 
and he loved cricket so much that he used to drive to Dublin to play with a cricket club and he was trying to get on the Ireland whatever under 18s or under 20s I, I understand cricket and I actually like cricket a bit like, I'd watch it that time like the, the, the shorter forms of it like it's a bit small <clears throat> it goes on for a whole day yeah but there's there's shorter forms so like there's T20 yeah which would be over in the same length almost as a soccer match Okay, so like that's 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 exciting enough, and they fireworks. They really jazz it up, like they <laughs> go for it, like do you know what I mean. This summer at cricket. <laughs> the thing about cricket, right? Uh, and I was out in Australia. All the old lads still play, and it looks like great crack. You can play cricket when you're like sixty and having a bottle after work, like lads play casual cricket. Whereas you don't see people like, you know, casually playing ga. Well, I suppose we'd be fairly casual, but you know what I mean. There's no casual hurling, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like even even junior B, which people say is oh, you know, <clears throat> great crack, it's great, it's, it's it's great for the crack. But still, at the same time, there's lads out there want to win, and there's probably lads out there want to hurt you too. So <clears throat> yeah, not leisurely about that. Whereas cricket is a bit more easy going. And actually, Marion Cricket Club in Dublin. Yeah, remember the day we went to the Phoenix Park. Me and Johnny went to the zoo. We're in between meetings, genuinely. <laughs> that's 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 what happens. Like. Nip down to the zoo. We had like two hours between meetings and we went to the zoo. I fucking love the penguins, lad. And we were Ah the penguins was, are some crack. He was buzzing. But we walked through Phoenix Park obviously to get there and there's a cricket club in there, Marion. I think it is. Or one of the cricket clubs were in there anyway. Marion seen that we were watching a game of cricket and they messaged us on Instagram and they've um invited mm. us up to play a bit of cricket during the summer. Yes. Yeah, so we're gonna go up. But I reckon, honestly, like I'm gonna play it for two minutes and they're gonna be like Fuck it, you should be on the Ireland team. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? As soon as we saw the boys playing cricket, like, Max was like, was like oh, give me a go at that. I'll be fucking class. Because, <laughs> like, a lot of the boys who play in the Phoenix Park are from, you know, Pakistan, India, the West Indies, yeah, where yeah. cricket is massive. Mm. Yeah. And they were just looking at us, and Max was itching to oh. get out, like, have a go at Do you know what? I felt like I was back in my childhood, standing <laughs> at the side of the play park in Ross Cray, and someone, like, waiting for someone to say, do you want a game? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, go on, boys, give us a bat. Now, in fairness, it was in the middle of a serious enough game. It's so. Yeah, but they were playing cricket wearing jeans. Yeah, yeah. You know, how hard can it be? Come on. Yeah, if you can do it wearing jeans. <laughs> yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna give that a go and we might we might actually try and capture some content and maybe yeah. do it. The thing holding cricket back in Ireland, I'd say, is a bit of an anti British sentiment. Oh, God, yeah. mm. Like the boys who got slagged for playing cricket, it's probably like oh cricket is a bit of an English thing. Like there was a cricket club club in care. Going back over 100 years. Because Kerry at Garrison Town, there used to be soldiers in Kerry. So the soccer club, where it is now, that used to be a cricket. That right? was a cricket club. Right. And there's yeah. photos and loads of lads playing. Like. Jenny, man. I but then when like the old revolution came in, all the English stuff, gone. No more cricket. I love to give the old cricket a go. Like Freddie Flintoff talks, obviously, he's an ex cricketer and stuff like that. And I'd be a massive fan of him. But he was saying, it's such a great sport that you can play it for like two or three hours in the morning then you take a break for lunch and he said he used to have like a four course meal and then go back and play it that's my type of game you know if I can have a steak sandwich at half time in a hurling match I'd chance it do you know what I mean would you be happy wearing all the white clothes though you know? oh, <laughs> looks class lad I'd be out laddie dad with hair gel big white jumper on me <laughs> there was a lad who used to hurl with us in care man. oh yeah yeah Derek Davis and he you want to hope he, uh, he definitely probably listens he's now. listening how are you Derek but Derek would turn up to training all white. Oh, he was impeccable. He's he's very good at command. He'd be wearing like a fitted white t shirt, mm -hmm. white shorts, yeah. white socks. He looked like he was about to play on fucking centre court. <laughs> <laughs> and he was real tanned and he'd always be well groomed. Derek yeah. was just the coolest guy and he'd coolest walk, guy. walk out in the field. Hi guys. You know? Since he retired, like you know, the oh, style stop. factor down care GA has just gone down. Yeah. Anyway, so Max is doing his best life. I'm doing my best, but sorry. I'm finished now as well, so um, what other sports we have a list here? Mm -hmm. It's Max's favourite sport, I think, is table tennis. Table, not enough love for table tennis. Honestly, like I've said it, I know we turned this room into a studio, but it was very close to getting turned into a table tennis room. Mm. <laughs> but it was, it was fucking flip a coin now between a podcast studio <laughs> and a table tennis room. Thankfully, we went for the studio in the end. But Tell him about the day yourself and Finch with <clears throat> Dawson. Yeah, so, oh, shit, I'm going to put him in it now as well. Um, oh, shit. So... When I used to work in Super Value, I was doing my butchering diploma in DIT. Yeah. And uh, our friend Finch works there as well. Still does. Which is fucking... can be tricky for him on Monday <laughs> when he goes back to work. But we went... He was doing a college course up there as well. And he was doing retail and I was doing butchering. And um, the odd time, they'd clash. So I'd be up for two days a month and he'd be up for two days a month. And this one time, we both got our days together. We're like, this is great. We'll, we'll share a hotel room and it'll be good. Of course... You know, sharing a hotel room leads to going out for a few drinks. And we went out for a few drinks one of the nights. And we slept in past 
the start of college. And we were like, ah, oh, sure. No point going in now. <laughs> We've missed the first two hours. So we went off and had a table tennis marathon. <laughs> Six and a half hours of table tennis. <laughs> we were absolutely sweating to death by the end of it. And we were like, just playing in like a leisure plex in Dublin. Yeah. And like, we'd pay for the lights at the end of it. Yeah. Cost us nearly a week's wages at 10 lights <laughs> for the table tennis. But it's a good sport. <clears throat> is it a sport? Oh yeah, okay. It is a sport. Oh, it is just big in China, no? Yeah, yeah, it's huge, like. But good sport, bit of crack as well, and you know you can also play beer pong on the table as well. So, so we do you reckon, that. like, if um, Marie and Tom from the Hill Inn in Care are listening, you've got a big room out the back of the pub. Mm-hmm. You have a pool table. Get a yeah, table tennis table. Tennis table. Yeah. If when I eventually, t- when me and Johnny eventually take over the empire of running two Johnny's pubs, <laughs> we're definitely going to have table tennis tables in them all. Yeah. Good crack. Yeah. yeah, just take away the bats in late at night before you know. Um, <laughs> what else one do you want to give a show? Bad- ba- badminton. <clears throat> badminton is a great sport. I, I reckon more people playing badminton, mm. and you could do badminton as a couple. Mm. Mixed doubles. Mixed doubles is a thing in badminton. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I know. It, actually, in Drumconnor, it's like badminton is a big thing. Like we would have played it all through primary school and. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indoor, or outdoor. Indoor. Yeah, we had a big, we had a badminton court in primary school and we also, down the community, or the parish hall, there was uh, two badminton courts. It's not played outdoors. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's not, yeah. Like, I think the too English windy. aristocracy might have in the, you know, 1800s played it outdoors. Yeah, but, like, yeah. but the shuttlecock, any bit of wind, it's all over the place. Just fucking, it's outdoors in care. That you just passed someone's backyard now and they were <laughs> out fanning around with a badminton racket. There used to be a badminton court out the back of the stop in. That was a ball alley. It was a badminton court. Go away. Yeah, I remember we, we rehearsed in there one time with the band. Sound was off. <laughs> I suppose Todd made it for But just badminton, uh, if, you're, if you get a chance to try it, give it a go, because it's great crack. I think we should try all these sports. Yeah. Definitely. Another one is like Bacha. Yeah, but there's no Bacha club in Ireland. Yeah, but we're going to set one up. This is what we're here for. What's Bacha? So it's like bowls, but it's played with a really heavy ball, round ball. Mm. And it's kind of on like grit, kind of sandy grit. For all the world. But the player don't land Zerati. That's how I know. No, the owl that's playing it. And you know, to be having a few drinks and throwing this. It's like balls, but you don't roll the ball. You kind of throw it underarm and try and knock the other balls out of the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There could be another name on it now, Bar Bacha. I could have just completely made that name up. I think it's Bacha, yeah. But I think it is Bacha. And <laughs> balls is good too. There used to be a balls club in care down in the, in the field there at the castle. Yeah, you see, balls probably has a representation of like, you only, you're only allowed to play that if you're an OAP. Yeah. So... But like it's an enjoyable old game. Pass a few on a sunny day. Yeah, sunny day there. Yeah. See, yeah. Ball. balls you could be and a glass of pims. <laughs> Johnny, one of the ones you wanted to get into was shooting. Shooting, yeah, I love shooting. Yeah, I don't get to do it much anymore. No, no. Like clay pigeon shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some crack. Uh, well, my brother is very good at clay pigeon shooting. He's represented Ireland, so yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. yeah. Like <coughs> it is. It's very frustrating, like when you start missing them. Yeah, and you're just there, like, and then you're getting really frustrated, and you have a gun in your hands. It's not if you get if you get easily thick like me, it's not a sport I would recommend. Okay, yeah. we went on a stag to Kilkenny, and they have a shooting range there, and they have mm-hmm. rifles, archery, and then clay pigeons. Yeah. No, now in fairness, you know that's just to leave in the end. <laughs> but one of the boys couldn't understand like why he couldn't shoot an actual crow. <laughs> He was like pulling, then an actual crow ran across, and he was like, bang, bang, fire two shots. Your man was like, whoa, don't be shooting the crows. And he's like, oh, why, like? <laughs> I mean, just shoot that instead of the clay, yo. We were kindly asked to leave. Um, yeah, I think shooting is good crack. If you get a chance, definitely try that. There's clubs as well. Yeah, shooting mm. clubs, yeah. Gun clubs, bye. Um, Rodeo. Yeah. That's something I'd like to see introduced in Ireland. Oh, yeah. Rodeo. Like yeah. the America, oh, look like some crack over in America. Let's go on the audio. Yeah. And it looks like a big party in the whole lot. Like, like, who wouldn't like on a Saturday night to head into Tullamore mm. and watch some fella try to mount the bull? Ah, you probably see that in Tullamore anyway. <laughs> you probably <laughs> would now, on if, yeah. especially if it was a festival. Do you want know, imagine Burr Vintage Week, lad? A rodeo. A rodeo. Lord, lads. Ah. Listeners, have you ever seen a rodeo in Ireland? Davey Russell told us he'd love to give that a go. Yeah. When we interviewed him for the podcast, he said he loves to give audio. Yeah, th- like you'd never get insurance to make a TV <laughs> program about it, but yeah, no, yeah, I think there is ways. Like, you might start you off like in a 
quite enough bullock and then for you know. A donkey. <laughs> Listeners <laughs> to this podcast, if there's a rodeo going on in Ireland or if there has been one, can you let us know? We'll go to it. We'll rock on to it now. Okay. Um basketball. But that is play it. Yeah, but yeah. not much like. Donahue was on Kieran Donahue was on, right? He's yeah. flat out at the basketball. But there are not too many lads our age still playing basketball. It's like you start working or whatever and then if you're playing a bit of guard, a bit of soccer, that's it. Mm. But basketball is good crack and if you're playing it like casually, you probably won't get injured. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, you roll an ankle. <laughs> not everybody is as bad. Yeah, I suppose it's injuries. <laughs> I think the, the great thing about basketball and badminton, those sports you're on about, and I'm noticing a trend here, they're all indoors. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're very clever. Even when we used to play the AstroTurf soccer, and as soon as the weather got cold, Johnny was like, nah, I can't go up. <laughs> Get a cold, lad. I get a cold. I mean, AstroTurf soccer was a disaster. You had the fucking the octopus playing. James Highland smashing you with elbows into the face. The yeah. lad, la, lad used to come, come play AstroTurf soccer. Never played soccer. He turned up in shoes. Yeah, suede, <laughs> suede shoes. Wedding shoes. Oh, yeah. Going up playing soccer. Yeah, he'd hurt you that bite. But yeah, 100% basketball. We'll, we'll give basketball a go, lad. We, we, like, we like Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrison, but <laughs> me and you. Tip men can't jump. <laughs> um, what, I'm not going on tug of war. Really? No, there's a couple of tug of war clubs around here. That's tough. Lad. It's hard on the body. Yeah, and it can't be that much crack. Because I was when I was thinking about this topic, I was thinking of like what sports would I suggest for you to try? And smacks, I thought straight away tug of war. Looks some fucking big, is it? <laughs> but like you've the big calves and the big ankles. You, you fair big calves. Like yeah. you, you Calfzilla. Know, they like those. They, you just stump them into the ground and they wouldn't move. Like you know, <laughs> just lock the feet. In. If you if you have five minutes. Listeners of the podcast, go on to the Fair of Care in 1993. There's around 40 minutes of tug of war, and I swear to God, it's comedy gold. Just lads roaring at each other, like, bah, bah, screaming, fags out of them out, like, it's proper 1993 job. I want to be the lad who just shouts at the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right, job. Come on, like, on to fuck. I used to be at a load of those days when I was selling Hurleys, yeah. and there'd be tug of war on, I'd always go watch, and there'd be some fella, that'd be his job, just to roar at yeah. the team. He had no qualifications, man probably never pulled in his life. And there's some big, some big lad in at the back, like, holding it all up. Anchor, yeah. Yeah, and he's just, like, purple in the face, veins bulging out of him, like. It looks too hard in the back. Yeah, too hard in the body, you know that is. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be trying that. Rounders. Yeah. My old favourite, you know, lost the Munster final, and Nelly and the boys are playing the rounders, but... That is a game now that can be enjoyed there. Oh. Could be out, fine day, you know, nice leisurely one, few drinks maybe. And that, again, can be played mixed. Mm. It's a great sport. Yeah. People should play rounders more. Johnny, rounders, um, bat, racket or hurley? <sighs> you see, you want to have a good game. Yeah. So I, I'd be nearly saying like racket and a tennis ball. So everyone can hit the so ball. So everybody can hit the ball. And then it won't go that far. Yeah. Like how far can you hit a tennis ball with a racket? Like not that far like. 60 yards Yeah maybe even. Maybe yeah Whereas it's actually Meant to be played With a, a metal bat A baseball bat And a slitter Actual rounders Is rounders actually Supposed to be played With a slitter Yeah Mosny job Yeah That's that's what we used To play with Yeah From God Mosny In official <laughs> competition <laughs> Cast now Mosny Is the um, Centre for asylum secrets Isn't yeah. it Yeah 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 mm. yeah Do you know the same staff Still work there No way Yeah cousin mine Worked there for a while Whoa. The guy who's like in the tuck shop is like been there since it back when you were going to Mosny. Like, he's seen some shit. That guy, yeah, he's, he should write a book. That guy, <laughs> lastly, for me, the other sport, I don't really know if it's a sport, more of a game as well. Sheaf Tron, oh, yeah, surely you came across that now up there in, yeah, in, in the wild, wild, yeah. the wild, wild west up there in Mead. That would be at the uh, Minority Steam Trashing, yeah, yeah, yeah. St. Anne's Field Day in Ross Craig used to be at. Yeah. T- tough men by Sean. For anybody yeah. who doesn't know what that is, Dick, it's like you stick a fork into it. It's like a small cock of hay. Like a small cock of hay. Yeah, it's like it? a bag. It's you, well, well, the way I've seen it is a bag full, filled with hay. Like, so yeah. it's like supposed to be, I think it's a game that kind of developed from like when lads would be forking hay bales into a shed or yeah. into a trailer, you yeah. know. So. And you basically like throw, throw it over your shoulder. As high as you can. O- over a goalpost for all yeah, the world. And they yeah. keep putting the, hot, the bar up and up. No Some teleport. crack like. No teleport or something. Yeah, a lot of people watching then cheering it on. Um, canoeing. He's back with the fucking canoe. Hey, there's a club in care. Yeah. Or not a club. There's some sort of an organization. Mm. I was shouting at him one day. <laughs> they gave me their website. Canoeing is... Have you ever done canoeing? Yeah, yeah. Well, like on a like day away in primary school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very tough in the back. Yeah. It's no joke, lad. The thing in care is if you, if you get into the river, like, you're only going one way. 
Mm. Ardfinnan. Ardfinnan. <laughs> yeah. No one wants to go there. <laughs> no, right? What happened? Then when you get to Ardfinnan, you have to get a lift home. Because yeah, you can't come you're back not, the river. You're not going paddling against the stream. Like. Oh, tough. Too tough. Yeah, you need a minibus to pick you up. Can no one's a bit of crack? We should build an old raft like we used to do. We'll do that, so. And, and just float down to Ardfinnan. Right, we're off to build a raft. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd also... Maura, you're into horse riding? Yeah. Good crack? Oh, it is serious crack. Yeah, Expensive to get into though, is that? Um, you have to buy a horse. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose yeah. you can rent a horse, yeah. Uh, if you, yeah. If you wanted to go do a lesson, I think you'd be, for an hour, maybe 30 or 40 euro. Depending on where you go. So, mm. But uh, oh, it is, it's a nice thing to do. And it's like, if you get into it, it's a uh, horse is a lovely animal. It's like, you know, you chill yeah. out. So. Shout out to Tag Rugby, which is still flying. All the mocker boys do it. Uh, motorsport. Is, is, is the Demolition Derby still going in, in Rose Green? I think it is, yeah. Uh, one, we'll go to that. That's some Motor, crack. Motorsport doesn't do it for me, like Winter Rally Wanda. Could not believe I was standing there for two and a half hours. And then, like, <laughs> meow. 20 minutes later, <laughs> meow. And Boy's like, oh, I see that. I was like, no, it went too fast. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, was that the Rally of the Lakes or something? No, I didn't go to the Rally of the Lakes, lad. Jeez. People no, love that. The Stone Throwers, I actually think it was called. They're in care, like. Yeah, yeah. Stand up in an old bend, like, out the old road, like. I was just smoking fags. Yeah, watching smoking fags. Yung. Scan your jackets. Nah, no, it's not for me. More sport. Fair play to the Roller Derby ladies. We did a video oh, with them yeah. as well. That's mental. That is tough. That is tough. Roller skating is fair tough. Yeah. Never mind the Roller Derby. Yeah. Getting up and staying up is, yeah. is, is the tough part. She was broke up after that video. Okay, so my, my recommendation, Pata, is um, give badminton a go. Okay, and if you're pulling me for one sport, rounders. Okay. Mara? Yeah, that's good. Well, I was just going to say that I, I I was thinking you should try tug of war and I was thinking I would love Johnny B. But now, this probably wouldn't happen because of health and safety and PC and all that. But I would love to see Johnny B. take part in a donkey derby. I just think <laughs> it's uh, some crack. They don't have, they have Are they allowed to have yeah. them anymore? They're, it's kind of an underground thing now. <laughs> 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 I've heard of them, but I do remember I do remember seeing one in Westport a couple of years ago and it was brilliant. Like donkeys, like play. <laughs> <laughs> flying down was it Westport or Newport in Mayo I think it was Newport actually yeah. sorry they used to have them in care too in the yeah. field yeah. do you know I think we talked about it before but like another underground phenomenon in care was pig race <laughs> race oh, yeah. and pigs it's not quite a sport yeah right? not, not quite a sport but good crack nonetheless <laughs> so there you go rounders and badminton lads give them a go and cricket we'll, we'll capture the content when we go and play the cricket definitely and finally it's yurt and dirt time where we go our highlights and lowlights of the week Johnny B do you want to kick us off uh, my art of the week is I, I went to the fairground uh, Fundamania <laughs> Now Lifestyles of the rich and the famous lad Fundamania I had a, a rare night off So I tipped up to the one in Limerick Some crack Went on the Walters Lad Fundamania don't fuck around What? The Walters lad I got a dose of the spinnies on the Walters <laughs> The one big question I have for you Was there a lad there shouting like Yeah hands inside the Walters all the time One more time No <laughs> No lad, this like Fundamania are like hardcore. They're playing insomnia, you know. I can't get no sleep. And it was like strobe lights yeah. going, lad. It was uh, you know what I mean? You was getting Vietnam flashbacks the whole lot. I was like, <laughs> oh, it was mental. Crazy. And then, you know, I love Limerick, like sure all these kids come up and there's loud music and they're like, Hey, are you the person off Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> uh just yeah, some crack. Fairground. Fundamania, Yurt yeah. of the Week. My yeah. Yurt of the Week, and I, I suppose it's something we'll all share here in Two Johnny's podcast, is Davy Russell. <laughs> Yeah, winning the entry Grand National um, again on Tiger Roll. Davy, good crack. I'll return that missed call. No matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dirt of the week is two weeks in, still no sign of the jacket <laughs> or the Ray Bands. So, you know, it's still out there somewhere. I'm still holding out hope. There's some honest people out there. If they want to return it to me, uh, you can contact us at podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, actually, uh, talking about lost items. Uh, just a shout out to Jay and Coppers there. I meant to give him a shout out ages ago. He found me wallet there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I lost it. And he, he, he came good for me. By So, Jay, sound out lad. And I have to give a shout out to um, Louise Cohen. Cohen. Louise Cohen from Galway. Okay. Uh, she gave us Leo Morn's phone number. <laughs> 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 and it changed our life. We had Leo oh, Morn brilliant. at our Christmas party in Whelan's last year. And uh, she, we were talking about it on the podcast or something, and she just snapped in. She's like, Leo Morn comes into the shop I work in. Do you want his number? That's <laughs> <laughs> fair sound, yeah. But I didn't ring him. I, I, I messaged him online. Like, I went about it. I, I well, you went across the correct channels. You yeah. Don't, you I, don't cold call someone. But there you go. It's not how this works. You're definitely going to drunk dial him at some stage, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, Leo, I love you. 
<laughs> right, on that note, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week, same time, same channel. From me, Johnny Smacks. From me, Johnny B. From me, Maura. Good luck. Good luck.